Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and after over a year, we are finally back for an unknown-only challenge. At the start of my Azuril-only Emerald run, I said that I needed a break from Unknown for a video, but that came out at the end of August last year, so it was a bit more than that. Today we're asking the question, can you beat Pokemon Platinum using only Unknown? The single attack Psychic type gave me a ridiculous number of problems in Pokemon Crystal, and Platinum has a wealth of extra Dark types to face. Most weak Pokemon that I consider challenge worthy can back up their poor stats with good moves, but Unknown just gets hidden power. It is, in my opinion, one of the very toughest Pokemon to use. Below average speed and defenses are less than ideal in a world where plenty of Pokemon have random Dark type attacks on hand. We're going to be going with my regular rules. No items in battle including held items and a set battle style for when we can eventually add to our team. We'll obviously need some extra Pokemon for HMs along the way because Unknown can only learn Hidden Power, but we won't be using them to battle. Alright, that covers all of the basics, let's get into the video. We had to swap out one of the starters for Unknown to make this possible and I decided to change Turtwig so Barry could use Infernape on his journey. That means we're getting things going against a Chimchar and we really don't know whether or not that's a good thing. As it turns out, it's just neutral as the normally effective hidden power is neither super nor not very effective. That rules out ground, rock, water, bug, steel, fire, grass, and ice. The unknown energy wipes out Chimchar without any issues though, so let's move on. We nickname our A-form unknown Algernop, and now it's time to figure out exactly what type we'll be dealing with for the time being. We're gonna have three gyms to go through before we're able to catch any new team members outside of Silesion Town, so let's hope it's a good one. A hidden power on Shinx narrows our possibilities down a bit more as it deals regular damage once again. That means it's not flying type or electric either. That leaves fighting, poison, psychic, dragon, ghost, and dark. But Jew is next in Algernop's sights and a super effective hidden power leaves us with only one option. Unknown is going to be working with a psychic type hidden power which has pros and cons. It's a stab move right off the bat which is going to be a massive help early on and based off the damage it's dealing I think it might be fairly powerful. It's also a decent match for the first few gyms but there's a major problem that comes with it. Team Galactic have plenty of dark types on hand and they'll be totally immune to Algernop's hidden power. Well, let's see how this goes. After completing our research we can head through Jubilee F City and meet up with Barry for a second battle. While searching for a Bajou to figure things out, Algernop took down enough Pokemon to reach level 8 and that should be enough for this one. Considering we're in the very early game, most every Pokemon we meet will be first stage, meaning Unknown is actually more powerful than some opponents. Starly goes down in 1 and after an unnecessary critical hit against Chimchar, we defeat Barry once again without being hit. I've changed my mind. This is now an attempt to beat Pokemon Platinum without being hit using only Unknown. We head onwards to the next city, and after finding Rourke in the Orberg Mine, he returns to the gym, so let's go after the Coal Badge. By this point, Algernop has reached level 13, and thanks to Geodude's low special defense, Hidden Power takes him down in one. Unfortunately, Rourke calls on his Cranido second, and remember when I said random dark type attacks crop up a lot in Platinum? Well, this is one of those moments. Combining Pursuit with a Potion and a Headbutt, Unknown is fairly easily defeated, so let's scrap the not being hit thing and give this another go. At level 14, nothing changes for Algernop's first foe. Geodude falls to a single hidden power once more, but the level boost should help out against Cranidos. Thankfully, Rourke calls for Leer instead of Pursuit to start, which allows Unknown to take the lead, but just before scoring the knockout, Pursuit lands. That leaves Algernop with just 7 hit points, which is not great news with one Pokemon still alive for Rourke. Onyx just about stands up to hidden power and Rock Throw finishes off Unknown, so let's run through this again. Alright, you know how this is going to start. Geodude is probably getting pretty sick of Unknown returning as Hidden Power blows him away once more. The big turn comes against Cranidos, where the extra level allows Algernop to score a 2 hit KO after the potion and thanks to Rourke's Leer Call, this one is as good as done. After a Hidden Power, Onyx cowers away from attacking and fails with Screech, allowing Unknown to pick up the win, earning us our first Sinnoh Gym Badge. That could have gone better, but it didn't take much over leveling, so that's a nice surprise. The next gym is in Eterna City, so that's where we're headed, but there's a really tough roadblock to deal with in Floroma Town first. There are two galactic grunts in Floroma who have to be taken on back to back. You can't take a break to heal up, which might not be an issue regularly, but the first grunt has a Stunky. The Poison Dark type is immune to Algernop's hidden power, so we have to go into the first battle with our PP exhausted. That will never not be weird to say. At level 18, Unknown struggles past the level 13 Stunky, finishing the battle with just 15 HP. 
As Struggle hits with Recoil, that's just not enough to take down the second Grunt Zubat duo. In fact, it isn't even enough to get past one. After grinding up to level 21, we return to the meadow to try again. This time around, thanks to Stunky using Focus Energy, Unknown finishes the first battle at 30 HP. At this point, Unknown can one-shot Zubat and it manages to make it through the battle with 2 HP remaining. I wish that was the last Dark type that Algernop had to face off against, but I know it's not. After getting past those two grunts, we can enter Valley Windworks and take on a Galactic Commander for the first time. Mars can be a tough opponent with her Perugly regularly slowing down runs, but we're a bit overleveled so Unknown just about makes it through. Fake Out and Faint Attack are almost enough to cost us the match, but once again, Algernop ends a battle in red health. After dealing with Team Galactic for the first time, we can head through Eterna Forest and track down Gardenia for another gym battle. The Grass-type gym leader isn't much of a problem though. Even with the use of a Super Potion, Turtwig and Sharon both fall to Hidden Power without landing an attack. Roseray does succeed in Paralyzing Unknown, but Magical Leaf can't take it down, so a super effective Hidden Power earns us the Forest Batch. Alright, that went well. Unfortunately, the battle I was seriously worried about has now arrived. As soon as it became clear that Unknown was working with Hidden Power Psychic, I knew this was going to be a problem. I am really not looking forward to this. Inside the Team Galactic Eterna building, we've got to take on Galactic Commander Jupiter, and she has a Skun Tank with Night Slash. As she leads off with Zubat, we have to go into the battle with Algernop on 1 PP for Hidden Power. That allows a one-shot on Zubat while meaning we can move straight on to struggle against Skun Tank. At level 27, Unknown just about leaves a mark on the partial dark type before fainting, which doesn't bode well for how long this will take. At level 29, Algernop gets a little bit closer, leaving Skun Tank just above half health after a Citrus Berry. A hefty jump up to level 35 actually doesn't get us any closer as a critical hit takes down Unknown pretty easily. Another 3 level jump gets Algernop a little bit closer, but it's still not enough. Struggle takes Gun Tank deep into red health, but it simultaneously knocks out Unknown, so not massively useful. Alright, let's go for another 3 level boost and try this again. As always, Zubat goes down in 1 to the super effective hidden power, but it's Jupiter's move selections that really help. Calling for Smokescreen and Poison Gas instead of Night Slash means Unknown gets over the line poisoned and weak, but over. Just. If Jupiter had continued calling for Night Slash, I'm not sure what level would have been required and I really don't want to think about it. That was a complete and total nightmare. Let's move on. You know the previous battle was awful when I'm really looking forward to moving on to take on a ghost type gym leader with a single unknown. Nothing of note goes down between Eterna and Heart Home, so let's go right after the Relic Badge. This will be our final gym battle with just Algernot, so let's end the solo part of this challenge in style. The massive overleveling that Jupiter forced might make this a little easier. Hidden Power blows away Duskull in one, so it seems like that may be the case. Fantina sends in her ace Miss Magius next, and although Confuse Ray allows her to attack with Shadow Ball, Unknown still comes out on top. Haunter sent out last, but Algernop snaps out of Confusion, and as it's super effective, Hidden Power one-shots the final ghost. Okay, having earned the Relic Badge, we can move onwards to Salacion Town. There's just one last battle in our way before we can start catching hordes of new unknown. Barry is back, and I feel like he's ready to continue his streak of zero damage battles. In fairness to him, Algernop is massively overleveled, but still it's getting a bit embarrassing for him at this point. After three face-offs, Barry still hasn't landed a single attack on Unknown. Alright, we've made it to Salacion Town, and that means we can enter the Salacion Ruins where the only available Pokemon is Unknown. Let's put together a team. After catching several bowls worth of Alphabetti Spaghetti, we've settled on this group. Joining Algernop, the Psychic type using Unknown A, we've got Limbo, the Fire type using Unknown L, Sly, the grass type using unknown S, Terra, the very luckily named ground type using unknown T, Zykirk, nope, me neither, the dark type using unknown X, and Wasabi, the ice type using unknown W. As we can't reach the name raider yet, I'll just be sticking with those nicknames and leaving their hidden power typings down in the corner. Also, somehow the footage of my battle with Maylene has disappeared. I have absolutely no idea where it went, but I can't exactly redo it now, so just know it took me like 10 minutes to complete her gym puzzle, but she went down pretty easily. I wish there was a better solution than just skipping it in the video, but I didn't notice until far too late. We're gonna jump ahead from Veilstone to Pastoria City, where we've got another rival battle standing between us and the next gym. As you missed the Veilstone gym battle, this will be your first chance to see our new team members in action. We lead off with Wasabi against Barry Staravia, and after an Ice-type hidden power leaves the bird in red health, Barry recalls him to send in Buizel. We try to switch out too, but Barry has worked his entire life to land an attack against us, and calls for Pursuit. 
In case you're unaware, switching out doubles Pursuit's power so Wasabi is obliterated by the Dark-type attack. We call on Slynex, who's also cracked by Pursuit, but bursts it off to blast Buizel with a grassy hidden power. That knocks him out to leave Barry with three, so he calls on Roselia next. I do like that the AI understands how to deal with Unknown because it makes things much more difficult than them just treating all Unknown as general psychic types. We switch out to Limbo who goes through an exchange with Rosalia which eventually leads to the Thorn Pokemon's demise. Staravia is back in next and a quick attack knocks off Limbo but we're still in control. Psykirk comes in as Barry calls for Endeavor but even though it leaves only 14 HP, Hidden Power still earns us another win. When Monferno is sent in we make another change bringing in Terra. I really wanted to give the whole team a chance here. That doesn't exactly go to plan as Flame Wheel and Mach Punch combine to destroy Unknown T, so we play it safe by finishing with Aldrinop. A super effective hidden power destroys Monferno, handing us another win over our rival. That opens up the Pastoria Gym, so that's where we're going next. We had to do a whole lot of grinding before facing off with Crash Awake though. His Ace Float Soul combines a base attack stat of 105 and a base speed stat of 115 with a base 80 power dark type attack in the shape of Crunch. That's basically the worst case scenario for this team. I had a couple of early runs at Wake, but Floatzel swept my entire team both times, so after some grinding we return to the gym leader. Against Gyarados we start things off with Algernot because I don't have an electric type hidden power user. The half water dragon half angry tornado does pin down unknown with a crashing waterfall, but two blasts of hidden power give us the early advantage. Wake calls on Floatzel next who's still far too fast for us to attack first, but Algernot lives through a crunch to hit once before Aquajet takes it down. We bring in Sly who's also able to live through Crunch in red health before dealing the finishing blow to Float Soul. That takes the Pastoria Gym Leader down to just his Quagsire and that's essentially the perfect opponent for Sly. Another Grass type hidden power one shots the Quad Week Quagsire earning us the Fen Badge taking our total to 5. Sadly that means we're back to dealing with Team Galactic. More specifically we're taking on the Team Galactic Leader Cyrus for the first time. We're reaching that nightmarish point in the game now where Sneasel starts popping up a lot and the speed attack dark combo is back on the menu. We lead off with Limbo against Sneasel but a hyper potion stops us from getting the knockout. Ice Punch freezes unknown and Cyrus takes the lead but he's only got a team of three so we don't have to worry yet. Terra's up next on our side but a critical hit on Ice Punch one shots it to put Cyrus 2-0 up. Zykert comes in third and takes an Ice Punch 2 before sending a hidden power back in the other direction. It's not enough to take down Sneasel though and Cyrus recalls him to send in Murkrow. We leave Zykirk in because it isn't much use here anyway and we can't afford to take any unnecessary hits. Zykirk falls to faint attack and we send in Sly to replace him but it doesn't serve much of a purpose here either. Drill Pet cuts down Sly so we call him Wasabi next who's actually a good matchup for Murkrow. Faint attack leaves the ice user weak but it counters with hidden power to score the knockout. Cyrus sends out Goldbat and calls for Bite which finishes off Wasabi to leave us with only one. Luckily we planned ahead and went into this battle with only one PP for Algernop's hidden power as it one-shots Golbat to take us into a one-on-one. -on -one. Sneasel returns to battle and Unknown struggles its way to the win, but that one really took a bunch of tries. That's all we need to do in Celestic Town, so let's move on to Canalave City. Across the Mine Junior and Bide only runs in Platinum, the rival battle with Barry and Canalave was probably the most difficult face-off of all. This time around we aren't reliant on a single baby Pokemon or the move Bide though, so this may go a little better. We get pretty lucky in the beginning with Wasabi taking down Staraptor with a couple of balls of icy energy. Barry's Heracross does no Night Slash which is a bit problematic and contributes to Wasabi's demise. Algernop's Stab Hidden Power is super effective against the bug though so in no time we're back in the lead. Floatzel's next in line for Barry and although I forget and let Pursuit badly injure Algernop on switch out, Zykirk has just enough to take down the water type. Roseray then casts aside the Dark user but the back and forth continues as Limbo's flames engulf the bouquet Pokemon to leave Barry with only his starter. When Infernape enters the battle we recall Limbo to send in Terra but for the second straight rival battle the fire starter gets the better of our ground user. Algernop returns to the battle and is hit by a flame wheel before countering with some psychic energy to earn us another win. Getting through that battle in one attempt is a complete game changer. It took hours and hours in my mind junior run and literally like three days in the bite only run. Anyway, Barry is out of the way so now the Canalave Gym is open to us. Rourke's father Byron is in charge of the gym here and he uses a team of Steel type Pokemon. The former Orberg Gym Leader isn't likely to cause many problems for us with two of his three team members being quad weak to ground type moves. Let's see how he gets on with Terra. Byron leads off with Magneton whose Thunderbolt almost has me eating my words immediately. It leaves our unknown T deep in red health before Hidden Power grounds the Magnetic Triumvirate forcing the Gym Leader to send out Bastiodon. The shield Pokemon's massive special defense stat means he tanks the quad effective hidden power but he wastes his earned turn by missing Stone Edge. 
Terra finishes off Bastiodon with a bit more ground energy, leaving Byron with only his Steelix. The floating dynamite plunger does strike once before falling to flash cannon, so I think this task may be a bit much for the Steel Snake. Limbo enters the battle and one final fiery blast hands us another win. That takes us up to 6 badges and we're just going to skip over the matches with Saturn and Mars at the lakes. Our overlevel team of unknown dealt with both of them pretty easily because they didn't have a single dark type between them. That means we can jump straight ahead to Snowpoint City and you can enjoy me struggling my way through Candace's gym puzzle. Unfortunately for us, the Snowpoint gym leader doesn't rely on just ice types with Dark and Ghost both popping up in her team. Let's see how this goes. We lead off with Terra against Candace's Sneasel and after a slash, Hidden Power cuts away a small bit of damage. Faint Attack then destroys our first unknown so we call on Limbo second. Sneasel strikes again to leave the unknown L in red health before a super effective Hidden Power takes her down. Candace sends in Frost last second so we recall Limbo for later to send in Wasabi. It's more or less a sacrifice so at least Shadow Ball makes it quick. Aldrin ops up next and although it has to deal with Frostlass's double teams, the unknown A picks up the win after taking a Shadow Ball. Obama snows up next for the Snowpoint Gym Leader and she takes care of Aldrin ops, but this is why we are saving Limbo. The quad effective Great Balls of Fire decimate the Snow Tree to take Candace down to 1. Pyloswine enters the battle and she's immediately engulfed in flames but counters with Stone Edge to knock off Limbo. We send in Sly to finish things and Hidden Power does just that. Pile of Swine faints and Candace hands over the Icicle Badge, meaning there's only one left now. Sadly, before we can head to Sunny Shore City, we've got a bunch of Team Galactic battles in front of us. Cyrus is the first one standing in our way, and that means a whole lot of grinding for Team Unknown. At the Team Galactic HQ in Veilstone City, we run into the Galactic Leader who starts things off with his Sneasel, yet again. We send in Terra to begin the battle, and after an Ice Punch, the Unknown T's hidden power deals some decent damage. After countless attempts, I know what's coming next, so recall Terra to send in Algernop. That's a lucky guess on my part, as it seemed about 50-50 on whether or not Cyrus went out to Crobat or Honchcrow. We get the right opponent whose bite injures Algernop, but Hidden Power takes the Poisonous Bat down into red health. Cyrus uses a Hyper Potion to prolong Crobat's suffering as Algernop tanks another bite to two-shot him with its stab hidden power. The Galactic Leader calls on Honchcrow, and now Algernop's outlived its use. Cyrus only has dark types left, so Algernop can't do anything, meaning his loss to Astonish doesn't really affect us. We call on Wasabi next, and although one hidden power isn't enough to knock out Honchcrow, at level 52, the Unknown W can just about live through a faint attack. Wasabi's icy energy takes down Honchcrow, leaving Cyrus with only his Sneasel. Quick attack eliminates Wasabi, so we send in Limbo to replace it. Sneasel's Ice Punch can't one-shot Unknown, so Hidden Power cuts down the Ice Weasel to finally give us the victory over Cyrus. That took a really long time. We're just going to skip over the face-off with Saturn because it was a complete joke and jump ahead to the Spear Pillar. The other galactic commanders, Mars and Jupiter, are waiting for us there. We have to take them on in a double battle with Barry on our side and this one was incredibly frustrating. I assume because he was sick of losing to us, our rival decided to contribute precisely nothing here. His munch lacks no stockpile and swallow but not spit up so as our entire team was getting wiped out, Barry spent the whole time healing up his first Pokemon. We eventually made it through having done all of the work ourselves, with just a handful of hit points left on our final team member, Sly. Our next destination is the Shadow Realm for one final duel with Team Galactic's leader, Cyrus. I'll let you judge for yourselves how this first attempt went. Leading off with Houndoom brings us back to that eternal problem. The combination of speed, a dark type attack, and enough power to back it up. Our entire team is decimated by Houndoom's Dark Pulse, so let's skip over the next few hours of attempts. We had to be around 20 levels higher on average to have any shot here because Speed, Attack and Dark is the name of the game for Cyrus. Houndoom, Honchcrow and Weavile all make things difficult for a team of unknown and Gyarados and Crobat aren't exactly pushovers. After far too many attempts, we take down Cyrus for the last time so that's it for Team Galactic thankfully. With that, we can finally move on to Sunny Shore City to go after the 8th Sinnoh Gym Badge. As Cyrus always forces me to massively overlevel, Voltner never causes much of a problem and I can't see anything changing here. Terra's super effective hidden power should help out massively. We lead off with the unknown T against Voltner's Jolteon and although the Electrotype gets off a Thunder Wave, Terra breaks through to land hidden power. The Sunny Shore Gym Leader uses a Hyper Potion to keep the Evolution in the battle but Terra's second run at attacking results in a one shot. Raichu has Signal Beam in his moveset which is slightly problematic but Terra breaks through the paralysis once more to take down the Electrotype in one. Luxray easily outspeeds the paralyzed unknown to crunch down for a knockout before we send in Algernop who blows away the Electrified Wolf Dog with a critical hit. Volkner sends in his Electivire last and he's gonna have to take down 5 different letters to get the win. 
Thunder Punch and Giga Impact aren't enough to eliminate Algernot though, and shockingly, Hidden Power gets us over the line. That's it. Eight gym badges down, we're free to head to the Pokemon League. Of all eight gym leaders, only Crash Awake and Candice really caused problems for Team Unknown. Some of the others probably would have, but Team Galactic forced us to grind way too high, which sort of ruined their chances. Alright, after getting lost in Victory Road for an hour, our Alphabet Assembly have reached the Pokemon League, where one more rival battle awaits us. Barry does have a U-turn Star Raptor right now, which is a bit worrying, but I think we can do this. We lead off with Wasabi, but prior to getting off an attack, Barry calls for U-turn, which Star Raptor executes, meaning Heracross is hit by Hidden Power instead. We then switch out to Limbo, who's struck by Night Slash before knocking out the bug with its Fire-type Hidden Power. Star Raptor returns to battle and uses U-turn once more to take down Limbo. That is starting to get a bit annoying. When Barry sends in Floatzel, we call on Sly. Crunch and Hidden Power are called for, and the massive level disparity shows as Sly earns the knockout in one. You know exactly what Barry's doing next. Another brief appearance from Star Raptor, who uses a U-turn and returns to his ball. This is a ridiculously effective strategy against a team of unknown. Somewhat bizarrely, Barry's team feels like it was designed to take us on. With Sly down, we send in Algernot to take on Roserade, and thanks to its super effective hidden power, it's an easy one-shot. Barry sends in Star Raptor again, and thanks to a 20-level advantage, Algernop outspeeds the bird to send a blast of psychic energy, finally ending our nightmare. Barry sends in Snorlax next, and because of rest, the next few minutes were incredibly repetitive. After wiping out Psykirk and boring Wasabi into a comatose state, Algernop knocks out the bulky normal type to leave only Infernape. After Flamethrower leaves the unknown A on 3 HP, that's the end for Barry. One final hidden power brings his journey to an end, so now only the Elite Four and Champion remain. Before heading in, we leveled the whole team up to 70, and then entered to take on Aaron. The first Sinnoh Elite 4 member specialises in bug types, which seems less than ideal for 6 psychic types, but it's not much of an issue. Honestly, Aaron does a lot more to trip us up than I was expecting. Yanmega, Scizor, and Vespaquen fall pretty quickly to Limbo, but Drapion messes things up a bit. We're forced to switch in and out before Wasabi eventually scores the knockout. Then Heracross takes full advantage of our weakened team to eliminate Wasabi and Limbo. Algernop ends things for Aaron in spite of his full restore usage, but I'm just surprised he managed to take out half of our team. That should have been easier and definitely doesn't bode well for what's to come. Birth is up next and this is basically the sole reason that Sly made the team when I was choosing who to use. The ground type member of the Elite Four has a trio of Pokemon who are quad weak to grass type moves, so this is Sly's time to shine. We have to do a small bit of sacrificing along the way knowing that Sly and Wasabi are the keys, but everything more or less goes to plan. With the set battle style, we can't freely switch for each new opponent, so sometimes sacrifices have to be made. Sly begins the battle by defeating Whiskash before Wasabi knocks off Hippowdon. Then Sly returns to defeat Rhyperior and Golem, and finally Wasabi's Ice-type hidden power hits Gliscor for 4 times damage to hand us the win. Algernop and Zykirk were necessary sacrifices, but we never really needed to worry there. That's half of the Elite Four done. Flint is up next. The Fire-type Specialist has a much more difficult team than those before him, and I thought this one would be a complete disaster. In the end, we actually got down to his final team member and were one hidden power away from winning, but Magmortar sent us packing. After leveling up a small bit, we brush off Aaron and Bertha once more before returning. This time around, Flint's Houndoom starts off with Sunny Day, which is much more palatable than a Dark Pulse. Terra, who's leading the line for us, blows him away with hidden power, so great start. Flareon is up next for Flint, and as he's equipped with Overheat and we could do with killing some time on Sunny Day, we move into Sacrifice mode. Sly comes in, dodging an attack aimed for Terra, and after a not very effective hidden power, is burnt to a crisp by Overheat. That harshly lowers Flareon's special attack as we call on Wasabi, who somehow stays in the battle for longer than expected. The Ice user does so well that Flint's forced to bring out a full restore before the evolution can take it down. When Terra returns to battle, Hidden Power falls just short of the one-shot, which means Flareon's Will-O-Wisp burns the floating tea before we can move on. Flint sends in Rapidash, and knowing the Fire Horse's love of Flare Blitz, we re-engage Sacrifice mode. Although Limbo is eliminated, Zykirk ends up picking up a knockout for Team Sacrifice, so good work, Zykirk. Infernape comes in for Flint and banishes the Dark user back to the Shadow Realm with Flare Blitz, but that was Zykirk's purpose, so no complaints. Algernop is struck by a Flare Blitz on entry, but survives in Red Health to counter with HP Psychic and take Elite Four member number 3 down to 1. Magmortar comes in and takes a crit hidden power before incinerating Algernop with Flamethrower to make it a 1 on 1. This was always the plan though. Although the burn has made it close, Terra returns to the field and just about makes it through Flamethrower before countering with hidden power to earn us another victory. That's 3! Alright, if Bertha was the sole reason that I picked Sly, the next up is the only thing I had in mind when selecting Zykirk. This is the Dark user's time to shine. Lucian is the Psychic-type member of the Elite Four, which on paper doesn't seem too bad for a team of unknown. 
It's just no fun though. We only make it to his fourth team member on the first attempt, so let's grind up and head back through. Anytime Lucian started the battle by using light screen with Mr. Mime, I just immediately reset. It slowed everything down way too much and made the battle pretty much impossible. If he starts with Thunderbolt, we're okay, and if he starts with Reflect, then we're golden. On this attempt, Lucian begins the battle by calling for Reflect. As none of our team members know any physical moves, that works out perfectly for us. Psykirk forces the first Elite Four member to use a full restore before picking up the win after a Thunderbolt. Espeon's up next, and this is the main problem area of Lucian's team. Zykirk manages to power through after a Shadow Ball to land Hidden Power, but it falls just short so Espeon finishes the Unknown X with Psychic. Sly enters the battle and also takes a Shadow Ball before taking down the Psychic type with its own Hidden Power. Alakazam is up next and Lucian gets another knockout by calling for Psychic, which honestly feels a bit disrespectful. Wasabi replaces Sly and goes Unknown Part to Toe with Alakazam, but a Crit Energy Ball puts an end to that fairly abruptly. Terra is up next and almost makes it a trio of knockouts, but Energy Ball leaves the Unknown T in red health, meaning Hidden Power comes out on top. Lucian calls on Bronzong next, and as Terra can't do anything against it, we swap in Limbo who absolutely blows the bell away with a flaming ball of unknown energy. That leaves the final Elite Four member with only Gallade. We don't really have any great options against the Psychic Fighting type, but thanks to Stone Edge's inaccuracy, Limbo gets Lucian to bring out another full restore. Gallade eventually gets the better of the Firebender, so we send in Terra who's able to get off a hidden power after Lucian's cockiness catches up with him. A not very effective Psycho Cut leaves Terra on 1 HP, allowing the attack. That makes Algernop's job a whole lot easier, so when he enters, a couple of hidden powers finish off Gallade to take down the final Elite Four member. That battle just seems to be seriously tough no matter what team you're using, although I do typically play through Pokemon games with ridiculously terrible teams. Alright, Cynthia's all that's left now. Cue the piano theme. theme is just the best. Anyway, our first run at Cynthia didn't go great. We made it to her fourth Pokemon, which isn't too bad, but let's try to do a little better this time. The Sinnoh Champion leads off with Spiritomb, which is basically Team Unknown's Kryptonite. Spiritomb has no weaknesses, high defenses, high attacks, and multiple stab super effective moves to use against each and every form of Unknown. Zykirk is brushed aside despite having an obscene level advantage, and to add insult to injury, Cynthia uses a full restore right after it goes down. Terra's first hidden power takes Spiritomb below half health, but somehow a low roll on its second leaves her with what must be one hit point remaining. Dark Pulse washes over Terra, wiping out three quarters of its HP before the most unnecessary critical hit in history finally takes down the Ghost in a Rock. Cynthia sends in her Lucario next, and Terra comes in extremely clutch to live through extreme speed and then one-shot the Aura Pokemon with hidden power. That's a real game changer. Garchomp's next in line and we need to get Wasabi in fresh, so Flamethrower eliminating Terra isn't a problem. After some bad luck against Spiritomb, the tables have really turned. Garchomp glides wide with Dragon Rush as Wasabi turns the Quad Weak Dragon into an Icicle, taking Cynthia down to 3. Milotic comes in for the champion and as Wasabi has a bigger part to play in this, we recall the Unknown W to send in Algernop. Another lucky break for us as Cynthia called for Mirror Coat, although she's probably got the right idea. Our starter's hidden power is countered by Surf, which isn't too bad, but now that she knows we're not switching out, the champion instructs Milotic to use Mirror Coat again. Algernop's second hidden power is reflected back, taking it down to make it a 3-on-3. Three three. This is Sly's moment now. The Unknown S enters, summoning all of its grassiest thoughts and blows Milotic away to regain the advantage of Team Unknown. Cynthia's penultimate Pokemon is Roserade and there's really nothing left for Sly to do here. It may as well deal as much damage as possible while it's left in battle. Before long, Roserade's Sludge Bomb makes it a 2-on-2, two two, but the typings are very much in our favour. It's almost like this entire team was designed with this battle in mind. Limbo enters the battle as Roserade launches a Sludge Bomb at it, but countering with Hidden Power, Unknown's Fiery Blast wins out. That leaves only Togekiss. We get another bit of luck as Air Slash leaves Limbo with two hit points, allowing one last Hidden Power, and that may make the difference. Togekiss takes down Limbo with Shockwave, and now we're into one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sure Unknown W vs Togekiss is pretty high up there on most people's list of dream matchups, and here it is to determine the Sinnoh Champion. The speed of Togekiss is on show as he lands the first blow with Air Slash, but Wasabi quickly counters with a super effective hidden power that leaves the Jubilee Pokemon on the cusp of fainting. Cynthia is shaken and uses a full restore to stop the next hidden power from ending things, but she's only got one more chance. Togekiss soars down, swiping a wing through the air, sending an Air Slash crashing into Wasabi, but it's not enough. 
10 hit points to its name, Wasabi rises up and sends one last snowstorm of icy energy barreling into Togekiss, earning the knockout and the win. That was not easy. After a long journey, Team Unknown have earned us the title of champion and answered our question. You can beat Pokemon Platinum using only Unknown, but I would not recommend trying it for yourself. There are definitely better things to do with your time. For now, that'll do it. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.